Welcome back to Hawk Talk. A reminder that the first math team meeting is next Tuesday, November 8th, during 6th and 7th hours in the loft. Remember to check with your teachers to see what you might be missing in class and talk to Mr. Anderson if you have any questions. Mr. Anderson. Okay guys, end of the quarter is on Friday. Um, make sure you get your homework in or you're going to end up like this guy. Yeah. Alright, it's time for our student and staff of the week. Teacher is Mrs. Ewan. Miss Ewan is an awesome teacher for all the students of GRHS. She's accommodating, kind, compassionate, and she meets the needs of the students in her care. We are fortunate to have her as a teacher at GRHS. Thanks, Mrs. Ewan. All right, time to pick our student of the week. Emma Morin. Emma always goes above and beyond as a fourth hour office helper. Thank you, Emma. For our last announcements, we have something super fun coming up. A school-wide election on Tuesday, November 8th. On election day, students will vote during their social studies class. We will tally up the school-wide results from the election and announce them at the end of the day. Here's a little rundown of who we're voting for. The Minnesota governor races between the current Minnesota governor, Tim Waltz, and who is a Democrat, and his challenger, Scott Jensen, who is a Republican. There are four additional candidates on the ballot. From the Grassroots Party to the Legalized Marijuana Now Party, the Independent Party, and the Socialist Workers Party. The U.S. House of Representatives race for Minnesota District 8 is between the current incumbent Pete Stauber, and a Republican, and his opponent Jen Schultz, a Democrat. This person serves in Washington, D.C. to represent Minnesotans from our region in the federal government. Our ballot will also include an important question related to Itasca County. It says, shall Itasca County be authorized to impose a sales and use tax of 1% to finance $75 million for the new Itasca County Criminal Justice Center, which is currently under construction in downtown Grand Rapids? In this question, you will vote either yes or no. If you have any other questions about the school-wide election, you can ask any social studies teacher. I'm here with Adrian Hansen Casa. He's captain of the cross-country team, and they're going to state this weekend. Yes, sir. How are the feelings? Um, it's big. I feel pretty good. You think you guys are gonna do good? Uh, at state probably we'll do mid, but like you're gonna compete. No? Yeah, we're gonna compete. Yeah. Sure. I know Giga Jabe, Aceban. Bonjour, Wagosh. Hey, Aceban. Do you know what Gashka Deno Gizes means? November. Ah, you're correct. The month of November is Native American Heritage Month. This is a time to celebrate the rich and diverse cultures, traditions, histories, and acknowledge the important contributions of indigenous people. Native American Heritage Month also provides opportunities to educate and share information with the general public raise awareness, and share the history and experiences of Indigenous people, both past and present. This month on Hawk Talk, we are going to share local Ojibwe wow. words with you. Stay tuned. Miigwech biz and egg. Thank you for listening. Gigawaba men. We got Cullen Dave here. What are you for Halloween? I'm that D1 prospect. You already know LBG, baby. D1? I thought he was in the NBA. Huh? <laughs> we got Aiden Tinkless here, also known as Kloss. What are you for Halloween? Uh, I'm a fun clown. Um, Show us how you use that thing. So the kids being bad, you go up to them and you're like, hey, no. Or sometimes another person, no. Just have fun. Is that from Dope. Fortnite? Yes, this is a squeaky hammer for Fortnite. Thank you, thank you, Quas. Happy Halloween. I am here with Jaden, Alex, or Luca, Ariana. And what are you guys dressed up as this Halloween? Um, I'm in a made outfit. Um, I'm in a skirt dressed up as uh, I don't know, because me and a few of my friends decided to do this. Just having fun. Yup, it's what Halloween's for. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, 
God decided to dress up as a demon from Demon Slayer, and her name's Nesuko. Holy, that's scary. These are all amazing outfits, guys. Let's keep on looking for more. Good costumes. We got Jake Bergman here. What are you for Halloween? You know, I'm kind of like the, the blue avatar from Avatar. Nice. Okay. We got Zach Osper here. What are you for Halloween? I am Itachi Uchiha from Naruto. Dope. Yes. <laughs> School bus stop arms exist to protect children as they are picked up or dropped off at school or home. We'll examine requirements for vehicle drivers regarding school bus stop arm safety, how these requirements are enforced, the consequences for violations, and how you as a motorist can help keep our children safe. In Minnesota, school buses make at least 10,000 trips daily. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Children are eight times safer riding a bus to school than any other vehicle. Their safety while getting on and off the bus is crucial. And this is why stop arms were implemented decades ago. Yet, violation of laws regarding stop arms continue to occur on a daily basis, endangering our children statewide. Every year, we hear stories of children being hit or nearly hit by vehicles not obeying the stop arm law. It was my first stop in the afternoon. I had uh, signaled as I turned the corner, activated my eight ways, opened the door, the stop arms out, the red lights are on, and the children were departing the bus. And my son came running in the house and said that Evelyn was hit by a car. Bus was stopped, stop arm down and everything, and as she's crossing the street there was an oncoming vehicle. The bus driver honked the horn, yelled Evelyn's name out the window. The car was not going to stop and Evelyn stopped and looked back at the bus driver and then kept going because she didn't understand what was going on. And she hesitated just enough for the car not to fully hit her. Um, but she did keep going a little bit and the car clipped her. Knocked her to the ground. The rear tire ran over her foot. I'm very grateful because if Mickey, the bus driver, did not um, stop her or slow her down, she would have been right in front of the car. It's eye-opening having first-hand experience with your kid getting hit by a car by someone failing to stop at a stop arm for a bus. It was the next day she didn't want to ride the school bus because she didn't feel safe. So it took a while for her to get back to normal. It was very hard. It's stories like these that reinforce the point that everyone needs to pay attention to their surroundings and always stop for school buses. The driver of a vehicle approaching a school bus displaying flashing red lights with the stop arm extended must stop at least 20 feet away from the bus. On two-lane roadways, all traffic from both directions must stop when a school bus extends its stop arm and activates the flashing red lights. The driver must not move until the stop arm is retracted and the red lights are no longer flashing. Even if the two-lane roadway has a center turn lane, vehicles in all lanes are required to stop. A four-lane roadway without median separation requires all vehicles traveling in both directions to stop. On a highway with four lanes or more, with a separating median such as a cement wall or boulevard, only traffic traveling in the same direction of the school bus is required to stop. Failure to stop is illegal, and many school buses are equipped with cameras to help identify and prosecute violators. It's important to know that violating laws regarding school bus stop arms is a serious offense. At the very least, a misdemeanor can result in a minimum $500 fine. Charges of a gross misdemeanor can result if a driver passes a stopped bus on the passenger door side or attempts to pass while a child is outside the bus or on an adjacent sidewalk. Varying degrees of felony charges can result should an injury or fatality occur. Distracted driving plays a significant role in drivers failing to yield for school buses. Minnesota is a hands-free cell phone state. That means you cannot have a phone in your hand while driving. Other distractions, such as entering GPS directions, setting a radio station, adjusting your climate control, and interacting with passengers in the car can all be distracting. Setting all distractions aside is the best way to focus 100% of your attention on the road. 
As a driver, it's your responsibility to know the laws regarding school bus stop arms and remain alert and patient whenever in the vicinity of a school bus or children. If possible, you may want to change your driving route or commuting schedule to avoid peak school bus activity. Make sure you know the laws regarding school bus stop arm safety on the type of roadway you are traveling. Do your part to keep Minnesota's children safe. It's scary to think of what it could have been. It, and it was really close to possibly losing our daughter. And that's not something anybody should have to go through. For more information, or if you have any questions, visit the Minnesota Department of Public Safety at dps.mn.gov.